What's up, you guys? Hello. <sighs> Come on, that don't work. All right. Let's bring this over here. First, let's go to an announcement that I just posted right before class. What's up, Angel? How you doing today, dude? <clears throat> Good job, by the way, on the... Because I think you're the first one to get in your uh, three-scene animation, right? You did your... Did you already do that? Every winter, yeah. monarch butterflies migrate Looks awesome. from North America to Latin America. Monarchs use a combination of air currents. Yeah, I, I'm super digging, by the way, the background that you did on this. What's up, Mel? How you doing today? Um, That looks really cool, Angel. Of course, I will uh, give you guys feedback later on this kind of stuff. Right now, feedback um, is happening outside of class. We just have too many students um, in this class to get, uh, to have revision rounds as like a class period. It was just getting to be like taking up two classes and I just can't do that all the time. And we're already behind on a project because of spring break so um yeah i have to do i have to do feedback via the modules and give you like your critiques in the module comments which is the worst way i hate it because i can't like see it in real time and give you guys as it just doesn't feel um as like detailed to me but um, I still give you guys the appropriate stuff to change. It's just like, it just feels a little, um, how do I want to say, like disconnected. Like I like to tell you guys, not face to face, obviously we're not face to face, but I like to have a video of it. And so I like to go over them in class, but it's just so many students in this class. Um, because I think that students come from multiple Maricopa Community College like locations. I think this is the first time that I've had students from different different ones. So I'm trying to write an essay, but I took a break to eat. Um, that's probably good because working on an empty stomach is never fun. Although sometimes if I eat too big of a meal, you know, you want to take a nap. Um, I find it appropriate. So whenever I work, let me just say this. And I don't know if you guys, uh, have your work, you know, how, like how you work, if you've got it nailed down, right? If you've got something that works for you, you get your stuff done and you don't have problems, that's great. Me, I have to take like breaks in between like large bouts of work because if I don't, um, it drives me crazy and then my work's not as strong. So usually I'll work on something for two, maybe three hours and then take a break and I have to walk away from it and I'll work on something else to get my mind out of that, you know, thing. But sometimes like, at least for me having ADHD, uh, I'll hyper focus on something and then it makes it hard for me to move away from it. Um, but I found that I do better work when I take breaks you know even frequent breaks when I'm working like so that three hours maybe I take like a few 10 to 15 minute breaks in between walk away from my computer rest my eyes for a little bit you know do that kind of stuff it makes it easier um anyways let me jump into a uh, couple things that I want to talk about. Well, we first thing I want to say is that we are three weeks and some change away from the end of the course, which is awesome, right? We're close to summer break, but um, that means that we have like crunch time um, as far as assignments go. So now that we're at the end of the course, let me zoom in on this if I can. Let me see here. 
Are you not going to work for me? There we go. All right. So now that the course is close to an end, obviously we're getting down to crunch time. And um, there's so I wrote an update for both late assignments and due date ranges, right? So if you guys have late assignments right now in the class, I will accept them up until April 30th. And after that, I will no longer accept late projects. And the reason being is because then we will be working on our final which is because I told you guys at the beginning we don't have a final exam for the class. Instead, what we have is like a final project, which is your animation reels, and we have to have all of our work done by then. And so um, you guys definitely need to have um, all that work done by April 30th so that I have a little bit extra time to give you grades on any of that late work if needed and that you have time to make those changes because then we have 10 days until school is over. Um, so a week and a half. And within that week and a half, we're going to be assembling our animation reel and we are going to be, um, you know, you're going to have to have your edited animations so anything that I've given you feedback on has that feedback has to be implemented and put into your reel if there are um, projects that are not in your reel you will receive points off um, for your essentially final project right so just keep that in mind you want to get anything that you can done by April 30th because if you don't um, it doesn't go in the reel, and then you're, like, already at a detriment for um, your final, right? So make sure you do that. Um, for every week that your assignment has been late, you will have 10% deducted automatically, and that is from the last um, date on the due date range, right? So if you get it in within a week, you, won't, you start at a 90%, right? And then I might have to deduct points or percentages based off of like whatever work you've gotten got done if it wasn't completed or you know however it goes um but so that's how that's going to work um <clears throat> as far as due date ranges because we you know before it was the one week and then you change it to two d two week due date range um but now that we're three weeks away from the end of class these due date ranges are going to be shorter and so um, I want you guys to pay very close attention moving forward to those due date ranges because they are going to be short and sometimes they will be within a couple days, right? So um, especially because we have this project that we're going to be doing, which is your custom three scene animation. This is probably the longest project that you're going to be working on. So it's going to take the most work um, because you're going to have to create your own assets for it. Um, and then we will have the final that we're working on. So you guys want to really keep up in class at this point. So that's just kind of what I wanted to touch on first. Um, the next thing, let's go ahead and jump right into our next project, which is our custom three scene animation. We're not going to have any more student online participation questions. You guys are done with those. So woohoo, no more having to take time out of your out of your schedules to work on this. I want you guys to focus on the rest of the um, projects in the course. Now I posted a couple different things. One was how to remove background noises from your voiceover because you guys will be creating your own voiceover for your custom three scene animation. And um, we have a couple different things here. This is actually I should have moved that forward. Here's your script approval for your custom three scene animation. Okay. Now this is only 10 points. Um, but it is if you want to get your script approved by me and not and make sure that it's all said and done and you're ready to go into the next phase then you will write your script up it's only going to be a few sentences long so it's nothing like it's not you know it's literally going to be like the monarch butterfly thing which was just three short sentences right so um two to three sentences uh Remember, the more you have to write, the more you create, which I will talk about in a little bit. And um, this is due by Tuesday night or Thursday night. I'm sorry. So today I have it open and you guys have until Thursday night to turn that in to get approval on it. What happens if you don't do that? I might not approve of what you've made for your three scene animation. And then you have to go back and do even more work because it wasn't approved. Right. So 
just keeping that in mind. Um, so the custom three scene animation, what is this? What are we going to be doing? Um, we're essentially going to be creating an infographic like we did with the Monarch Butterfly one, right? Um, it's going to be three separate scenes like the Monarch Butterfly scene was. And it's going to be facts about something that is um, based in reality, okay? I don't want you guys to do things on... It, it can't be stuff like... Mario or Nintendo or Pokemon or like not that I don't enjoy those topics I do enjoy those topics but it needs to be based in truth and so in in really what I want to see here is your own creative mind working and making up your own assets that don't necessarily look like something that we've already seen before and so um it's going to be a short infographic. Again, I had you guys do that participation question about infographics, right? Because I wanted you guys to understand kind of what we were doing. Some of you guys um, posted some infographic posters, which were really cool, which are just like animated posters um, that show information um, in a specific way on like one image, right? But um, the infographic videos that we're going to be creating are going to be essentially like the Monarch Butterfly one, right? Um, so these use animation and graphics to illustrate information and or data. Um, infographic videos are popular uh, way of making information and statistics more memorable, accessible, and easily digested. Um, because we have, there are studies that show that people pay more attention to um, video and things that they're seeing. A lot of people learn visually, and so infographics help to really digest information and break it down. Um, Jose, what's up in the chat? And Angel, absolutely you can do one about giraffes, right? What's up, Jasmine? Good to hear. Good to hear that you're kept catching up. Um, so... With that being said about the infographics, for this assignment, you guys are going to be tapping into your own creative creativity to create your custom three-scene animation, animated infographic, right? Um, you'll be choosing your own topic. So let's say, for instance, Angel will pick his about giraffes. Um, you're going to be writing your own script, recording your own voiceover, choosing your own music. Uh, creating your own custom assets and then anim animating them, right? Here is the biggest thing right here. Simplicity is key in order to complete this project, right? Um, it'll take around four to plus hours. So you guys need to budget your time according. Um, and you need, you need to think about how quickly you can get things done. And that's why I said when I was talking about the um, script, when writing a script, the more information that you have in that script, the more in the more visuals you're going to have to put with that information, right? And the more animation then you're going to have to do. So you guys have to think about that, right? You have to digest this. And I really need you to understand this is that the longer the script is, the more facts that you have, the more your work you're going to end up doing. And so I want you guys to be like, I want you guys to write your script and then think, is this something that I can do within the allotted time that it is due? Because this, um, if you notice, it has a one week date. OK, so it's much faster. It doesn't have a two week deadline. This is the last day to turn this in. And then the next day is the last day to turn in all of your late work. Right. I said April 30th is the last day to turn in all of your late work. So. You guys want to get this done, right? Um, I don't want to scare you, but I just want to be realistic in this when you guys are thinking about it. So these are some examples from previous semesters that we've had some really cool work that people have done. Um, a lot of these stick to a similar format as the Monarch Butterfly assignment, which is great, right? You guys can do that. Um, <clears throat> where there's like an icon that pops into screen and then maybe like some kind of map happening and then um, like an end scene that's happening, right? And so when you're kind of looking at these, you're going to notice that. I'll play a couple of them here. Um, this was Janelle's and she did a fantastic job. Um, let me actually pause this because there is 
audio to it, but I know you guys can't hear it um, because I can't hear right now. Let's figure this out. <laughs> Why does... Do you guys know where to find the audio in Chrome? Let me see here. History. Settings. I'm not sure why Chrome Hmm. <clears throat> Let me see if I can find these somewhere else. Let's see if this will work. Nope. Okay, I'm not hearing them for my headphones either. Bronze of Congress is located in Washington, D.C. You guys are hearing something, right? To over 55 I think you guys are hearing something with Janelle's. Let me know in the chat. If you guys are hearing, I'm playing it right now. There is estimated. Um, to be while over we're while I find out if you guys can hear the audio wide. right now, um, Some of the most popular genres. Janelle decided to do hers on fantasy, books, and I thought this was fantastic. Romance, I loved how. Um, detailed it was and how many Science like fiction. really cool little scenes Historical little fiction. tiny animated scenes and that she movie. has here particularly really make this the world's largest a great library, the um, of animation and here the she Soviet follows along like a very similar DC. idea right so she has the book here which is the icon wide. cool you guys can hear the Some audio the that's great I can't hear it um, but as long as you can, you can hear it that's what counts Fantasy. right um, romance Poetry, science fiction, yeah, historical fiction, no, not, and mystery. I'm not, I'm not hearing it there either. Um, but yeah, the she's got like, and then it ends up with some right sort of map scene here. Um, and so, Washington, you know, these are really good examples that show you guys kind of what other students have done in the past. Um, this one is really cool. The student did his about different the dinosaurs, dinosaurs was the largest animal to um, which I thought planet. was great. It lived during the late Cretaceous period, about 90 to 100 million years ago in South America. Uh, really cool, just like easily digestible information for you guys. But you're noticing that like the more information there is, right, the more animations that you guys have to do. Um, so I, I encourage you guys to look at all of these at examples and like pick one i think this one in particular is very very close yeah this one's this one's the most um follows the monarch butterfly three scene animation the closest okay and so this is acceptable this would be fine if you guys did something like this as well so um i'm gonna play this of the southern hemisphere and its surrounding but we have like all these little animated icons popping up on screen and then a final scene um with these little penguins which is really cute and it's all using very similar animations in fact um the same principles of animations that we the animation that we did in that three scene um, animation for the monarch butterflies, right? So definitely watch these and take some notes about like what you're seeing, what you're noticing, um, the music that you guys are hearing, things like that. Now, um, these are the key projects 
or aspects to this project. Um, let me pause this here. The first thing to do is obviously pick a topic um, and then you're going to write a script. You're going to look up some facts about your topic. So for instance, with Angel, his would be giraffes, right? I've had animals tend to be the best choice in this um, project in particular because it's easy to find a lot of facts on animals and it's easy to kind of shorten those facts up to be uh, a short script and um, it's an approved thing right away. Usually the animals never, I never, I'm like, no, don't do this. Or I'm like, maybe you want to reword the sentence a little bit more, uh, or a little bit differently, but it's never like, no, you can't do this topic. Right. And so that's why I encourage students to stick along the lines of animals and, and things like that. Um, your script, when you're writing it, it should be two to three sentences. Um, again, remembering the more you write, the more you have to create. I do not want you to reuse any of the assets from the Monarch animation or any previous project, right? So if um, that just means you can't do a butterfly one, okay? Or you can't reuse the same um, assets that you have used in any of those previous projects. So no music, anything like that, right? I want you to leverage all of the skills that you've developed in this class. So there has to be some sort of rigging happening. Um, obviously the animation and the fundamentals of animation or principles of animation. Um, uh, let's see, you said, I should ask if there's an audio scrubbing option available in After Effects. I can speak a little fast when re reading and I think it'd be helpful overall. So there is, I think, audio scrubbing inside of After Effects, but it's not great because After Effects isn't um, an audio program. Plus what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be recording this actually in Adobe Audition. So that's what I'm gonna show you guys today is how to make a recording inside of Adobe Audition and how to export that recording and then um, you'll be able to adjust it that way and then bring it into After Effects. So I think I think you'll be okay to do that. You'll you'll be able to hear it do multiple takes and maybe cut and paste together something that sounds um legible like it sounds like audibly legible. Um plus if you start pitching things down like if you start slowing your audio down in programs, it changes the pitch to the audio, right? So you can't just slow it down without the pitch being altered. Um, that's something to think about. So you might have to just do a couple takes of your um, your script. Usually that's what I always do. Whenever I have a script, if I have to do, we, we in my job during the day, um, I obviously don't do voiceovers. I'm not a voiceover artist. That's not my specialty, but sometimes we have to, while we're waiting for a voiceover to get cut from a voiceover artist, we have to do what's called a scratch VO, which is just there for us to figure out the timing of the animation and to give like an example to the client, right? And so, um, knowing how to cut a voiceover is very important in this industry and understanding, um, you know, just like the basics of audio editing. Now, when you're going to record a voiceover, you're going to stumble over words. You're not going to read things appropriately. You're going to take a lot of breaths, this and that, right? So what you do is um, you're going to read over your script a few times and you're going to take the best takes of those sentences in your script and you'll kind of mash them together to make like a Frankenstein version of your voiceover. And sometimes you will get it within like on the third try, you'll, you'll read it and it'll be great, right? So that is something that does happen. But I, I always recommend, especially when starting out, you want to cut a few takes and I'll show you how to do that today. Okay. For the design of the animal, does it have to be realistic or can it be a cartoon? Um, I will leave the, um, it just has to be consistent throughout the video, Angel. So 
If you want it to look a little bit more illustrated, that's fine. Um, versus more realistic. If you're more comfortable drawing in a more illustrated fashion, then that's great. That's okay. I just want to see that consistency throughout the entire video. So I don't want one to look like cartoony and one to look realistic, if that makes sense, because you want it to be cohesive, right? Um, so uh, you have to, back to this, um, the key projects here, leveraging all of the skills that you've developed, right? So you have to use at least two multi-part animated elements, like the robot arm and the butterfly, right? So multi-part meaning that there's more than one element that moves on the object. So, for instance, Angel, if you did the giraffe, right, you could obviously rig the tail to the body and the head and the legs, and um, the neck would be a big thing to think about. You might want to um, consider that because bending the neck of a, of a giraffe, right, first of all, you got to think of it like a long limb, Right. And the giraffe's neck isn't going to bend like my elbow is going to bend. It's like a very smooth, like almost like a spine, right? Like a snake or something. It's very long. It's very smooth. And so you'll have to probably animate that using the pin tool, um, which I can always show you how to do uh, later on. Maybe we'll talk about that if we have time in this class. If not, we'll talk about it on Thursday's class. Um, but um, rigging. It has to be a multi-part animated element, right? So the butterfly had the body and the wings and the antennas, all right? Um, use parenting and or layer relationships. Um, no text or typography. That is a big one. Other than the credits, um, I don't want there to be any text throughout the video because it's an infographic and it's meant to be relaying information via imagery and not not using text right so that's something to think about and and just be aware of right away anyways no one wants to read a bunch of text on their video it's boring no one wants to sit there and be reading a video right if we wanted to do that we would just pick up a book um so this is a big one a lot of students want to try and do that that's a no-no um pick a non-fiction topic that you're familiar with so for me, right, I'm super familiar with cats. Obviously, I own two of the little devils and they're pain, but I love them. I've had cats since I was little, so I would probably do something about cats. Um, I also am, um, let's think of what else, like I have comfortable, familiar with marine life and aquatic animals. I am very comfortable um, knowing about different species of just like I, I just know a lot about marine life and aquatic stuff. So I would I could pick something along that line, right? The just something that I'm already comfortable with, so that when I go to write my script and look up these facts, I'm not like panicking about it, right? I'm already like, oh, this is something that I like. It's a topic that I like to talk about. Um here. You may not use, or what does it say? No, we're done with that one. Um, it must have three scenes of animation, and that is not including your credit scenes. So just like the Monarch Butterfly, right? There were three visual animated scenes in there, and then you had the credit scene. So just same format of that. Um, you may, but are not required to use that format of the Monarch Project. So you can have the scene one, which is the animated icon scene two which is a map animation and scene three which is just like an animated kind of outdoor scene right so that works as well uh this is a design class it's not just a uh, class about anime animation is also design and so i think this is honestly the most fun project that you guys have in this class because uh you get the freedom to do what you want and pick whatever topic you want. But with that freedom comes responsibility, right? It's like getting your driver's license and driving a car. Any type of freedom has responsibility that comes with it. And so um, considering layout, right? Like I don't want to just see 
a bunch of stuff just thrown up there because you have to fill out the scene. I want it to be a conscious choice. Um, using a consistent and coherent color palette, that's very important, right? I don't want it to be um, very chaotic and like questionable. If you guys, I have had students and I've known people in the past who are colorblind. And so if you guys need help picking out a color palette, let me know and we can discuss that. Um, and then using, this is where Angel, this is where I was talking about, using a consistent illustration style. Now, picking out the music, we want to make sure, I always have students wanting to use audio and music that they like from certain artists, and unfortunately, we can't do that nowadays. Um, you know, back in the beginning of the internet, it was the Wild West when you could just kind of use anything without having to worry about copyright laws, but unfortunately, that is not the same nowadays, and things can get stricken um, down off the internet for copyright use, which or copyright infringement. And I'm sure you guys are more aware about that now because we are all more aware about copyright issues. So um, making sure that you're using free to use open source music is very important. I would suggest that you guys use something without lyrics because you don't want it to combat what your voiceover is saying, right? And so there's a few different places where you can go to get um, free music. And one of those is the YouTube audio library. I have a lot of students utilize this one. Um, and this one is great, right? Cause it's just meant to be on YouTube. Um, free sound. There are sound effects and other music options and stuff on here as well. Um, free stock music. And then you can make your own music if you want to at soundtrap.com. Uh, music makers, which I think is really neat because this is like, uh, I don't know if you guys, if you guys have ever had an Apple product, they have like GarageBand and so it's like similar like this. Um, it looks like you might get like a free trial to start working with stuff on here. So it's just an option for you guys to kind of make your own stuff if you want to. So if you have the time and, or if you're fast and you like to do that, I would definitely re recommend making something, right? Um, video lessons and techniques. Now, this is going to be more unique to each one of your topics, right? So since you guys are creating things individually and you're, not everyone's topics are going to be the same, not everyone's animation needs are going to be the same, right? So I have, um, I can't provide like a detailed step-by-step -step tutorial for you guys, on how to create your animations, right? The only thing I can do is guide you and give you some projects of um, like examples, right? Of certain things or taking what you already know and using that to create your animations, right? So, the, so if I'm going back, I'm sorry, I'm hearing things. Um, in the house and so I'm getting a little distracted. Just give me a second. Okay, let me kind of backtrack on that. Because I can't provide a detailed step-by-step -step tutorial on how you guys can animate certain things for this project, it's important to keep in mind the skills that you already have for animation and then kind of think of that while you're writing the script, right? So you're writing the script and you're like, oh, I can do this for this scene because I already know how to do this, right? So just kind of having those ideas in your mind while you're putting together a project, right? And again, that 80-20 rule, it should be 80% of what you know, maybe 20% of what you don't know, and that we have to look up, we have to maybe do a little research on, you might have to reach out and ask me how to do it, um, those type of things, right? Let me pause this real quick. I don't know why I clicked on that. Um, anyways, there, uh, here, if you want to watch, is an overview of this project. Um, here is another video I teach you guys how to record your voiceover. This one right here is going to be important for all of you, I think, especially if you're doing animals. This one right here, um, or staying along that scene 
uh, or the format of the Monarch Butterfly, right? Where there's the three scenes and you do the icon, the map, and then the nature scene. This is going to be beneficial for you because I show you guys how to not only create um, a 3D map, but how to create a globe. Um, Angel, like I was talking about, um, the neck of the giraffe. This one will be great for you. How to use the puppet pin tool and um, about how to create eye blinks for creatures because that's important as well, right? Um, because your animal isn't going to stand there and not blink. I mean, unless you've challenged it to a staring contest, which we all know isn't true. So um, definitely this one and this is going to, these are all going to come in handy, like a lot of stuff that you do, especially if you end up doing infographics and working for marketing companies and stuff like that. Um, I do infographics all the time. And so these are um, very common uh, techniques and, uh, you know, things that people use to create that. Here's some other illustrator tools, um, but you're not required to use illustrator for this project. So uh, like I've always said um, in the past, for you guys that, you know, Illustrator is smart to use because of its vector format. But if you are more comfortable, if you're faster in a different program, you may use that program to illustrate. Just keep in mind all those things I've said. If it's a raster based program, make everything bigger than it needs to be. And then when you bring it into After Effects, you will scale it down to the appropriate size of your... Um, of your composition, right? Because everything's going to be 1920 by 1080. We've already, already been doing that. But if you're creating something in Photoshop or Procreate or some other drawing app that you guys use, um, you will want to like double the size. So 1920, 1080 times two and make it that big and then bring those in, right? Uh, here is a script I want to give you guys. Now, this is not a requirement here. But this is a very popular free rigging tool that people use to rig animals, to rig people, and a lot of different other things. And it's using like a bone structure within the um, object or animal or human uh, to create a movement, right? And so it's a free script to use this wonderful company um, just takes donations and they name their um, scripts because it used to be Duick Basil. It's now been changed to Duick Angela, the most recent version. And um, it's just a wonderful, wonderful organization that does great things um, and help out the animation community at the same time. So this is if you want to learn how to rig animals and people. Uh, this is probably something that I would only do if you guys have a lot of time on your hands because this type of complex rigging takes a long time and it takes a lot of practice. And so, but I want you guys to have the opportunity to know this stuff. And so I just add it in here for you guys as like a bonus to know. There is a link to download the script here. And there is also... Um, a tutorial by this fabulous animator. Um, his name is Jake Bartlett, and he has a YouTube channel called Jake in Motion. He also does classes, and he teaches you guys how to use Duick Angela and also how to animate a, a walk cycle with people. So, And I know you guys are excited about doing that kind of stuff. That is, unfortunately, we just don't have the time to get to that point. In this class, we needed to talk about like basics of animation and stuff first. But like I said, I want to give you guys the opportunity to do something that you're really interested in. And a lot of students are interested in um, character animation. And so that is what that will be beneficial for you guys, even if you're not using it for this project. Um, it looks like I disconnected. Do you guys, where did I leave off? Are you guys back in the chat? Let me see something. I'm back up and live, but 
Looks like I lost you guys at some point. Oh, everything's been fine for you? Okay. Cool. I don't know what it said. Oh, it just said my chat disconnected. Um, I got you, Mel. I can see. Cool. Okay, sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, with the outline, I'll get back into it. Um, I have an outline of the process in creating, like, an infographic video. Um, you can follow and pay attention to the information on here. But um, basically, you're going to write your script, two to three sentences, record your voiceover. This is going to be like the the process and what you guys have to do it. So step by step on um, from the beginning to end of what you need to do. Um, so you're going to write your script. Then you're going to record your voiceover with a mic. If you don't have a decent mic, feel free to use like your phone or a gaming headset, or if you need me to cut you. I have had students who just are not very comfortable, uh, you know, they like maybe English isn't your first language, which is completely fine, but you would like me to help you with that. I can help you with that as well. Um, but I want you guys to at least try to cut your own uh, voiceover. Now, <clears throat> Like I said, you can use your phone with, um, like iPhones have the headphones with the mic in it. You can use that, um, your gaming headset. But I would prefer if you guys have like a nice mic set up. If you guys have it, great. If you guys do not have a mic, that is okay. I'm not, obviously that wasn't like a requirement of the class. So I'm not going to be upset, but you will need some kind of microphone to make it work. And that is why I posted that other, that alternate um, module on here and how to like clean up your voiceover. So that's going to be one you need to watch if you use like your phone or, or um, like an older gaming headset or something like that. And um, this is how to import your file into After Effects so you guys can watch that. I want you to sketch out. You guys can sketch out your scene. Um, and this can be super quick. This isn't going to be anything that you're going to show anyone. This is for you guys, right? It's for your, it's like uh, making blueprints for your animation, right? So I need you or I want you guys to get into the habit of sketching your scenes so that you have an idea of what kind of assets you need and then make a list of those assets. So like when we were going over the Monarch Butterfly animation and I was like, okay, we're going to need um, a top view of the butterfly. We're going to need a side view of the butterfly. We're going to need a whole outdoor scene. And then we're going to need um, like a map of the U.S. So those type of things, like when you're... When you're sketching it, like I said, it and it does not have to be nice sketches. I use stick figures if it's just me. And because it just has to be my understanding of what needs to go on. I'm not professionally storyboarding this out for someone. So, um, you know, it's just for my benefit. And so I suggest you guys do that because then you won't be animating and be like, crap, I got to get this, draw this too, right? Um, and then I want you to, then the next thing you will do is begin to draw your list of assets in either Illustrator, Photoshop, Procreate, anything that will export a PNG file or that can be imported into After Effects, right? And then I have this note here about if you use a raster program. Um, and then determine which assets you will need to animate and determining which parts of that asset needs to be moved independently, okay? So, like, when we were creating the butterfly, I had to separate the wings, the body, and the antenna. Um, for instance, Angel, if you do the giraffe, right, you have to think of what would move separately on the giraffe. So, if I'm thinking about this, 
Um, you have obviously the legs and different parts of the legs. I really suggest that you do not try to do a walk cycle. Instead, what you do is is do any shots like you're seeing will be of the giraffe's upper body and above. And that way you don't have to, or just standing stationary. I, I highly, highly, highly recommend you do not try a walk cycle with it because most likely it's going to be wrong the first time, right? We all start from somewhere but for this project since there's not a ton of time it would just be really hard to do it's worth doing on your own time though if you want to try it you could do one without and then do one with if you want my my opinion on how to change it or any feedback you can always do that if you have time but um if i were going to do the one that you were doing angel like the giraffe right if I started from the head down and moved my way down their body, um, I would have their head on a separate layer, their eyes on a separate layer, um, their mouth on a separate layer because they're probably chewing or doing something like that. Giraffes are notorious for a long tongue. So um, maybe I would have a, a fact about their the length of their tongue or something and have that on a separate layer. Their ears move, right? You have to think of like how animals move. Um, so their ears move independently, then the whole entire head would be separate from the neck, right? So you're seeing how you have to draw these layers on separate or these these parts of the animal on separate layers because those are things that would animate on them, right? And then if we keep moving down, we would have the body, which would be separate from the neck, the tail, which would be separate from the body, and the legs, which would be separate from the body, and parts of the legs that would be separate from each other, right? So the upper leg, the lower leg, and then the feet. So that's a lot of stuff to just draw just for that, but we're going, you know, the best part about it and thinking like piggybacking off of the Monarch Butterfly Project is that um, we reused that asset a couple times within the project. So that, you know, that could be beneficial. You do it once, but you can reuse it in different ways. Um, so thinking about that, but also thinking what's smartest way to work with this, right? So putting those parts that need to animate on separate layers and separate parts and separate files if you're not using Photoshop or Illustrator. So what does that mean? Um, when you're like, if I were to draw something in Procreate, I just say that because it's the only other drawing program I'm comfortable in. Um, and I were to create all of my individual like parts that need to animate onto separate layers. So I've already drawn them on their own layer, right? I would have to export each one of those layers out um, as a separate PNG with transparent backgrounds, right? Or what I would have to do is find a way to convert that to a Photoshop file and um, then bring that into, bring that Photoshop file into After Effects. So there's a couple different ways to do that, but, um, you know, whatever you're most comfortable with. But knowing that if you're using raster programs or something that doesn't natively import into After Effects, that you will have to think ahead about that. Um, and then... Once you create your assets and you import those into After Effects, you need to create folders for the assets according to the scene to keep the assets organized, right? Um, and then you're going to rig or parent any of the assets that will require any complex movement. Um, you're going to create comps for each scene and then label them like we did for the Monarch scene. You're going to lay out all of your assets in each scene in the appropriate composition. So what I like to do is I like to kind of set the scene up without animation so that it looks like whatever I drew, right? So if I were to do um, the scene like Angel you do with your butterflies for your Monarch one, I would just get that prepped in. Um, I call it prepping of the file, right? So I would put all of that stuff, the background, like your, your desert scene that you did. I would set all of that stuff up and all of my compositions first and then worry about going to animation because that way once I'm done animating one scene I can just move to the next scene and continue animation and I'm not like trying to set it up right it's already set up for me 
And then um, you're going to start to animate your scenes. And then you're going to put the scenes together in the main comp with your voiceover and make sure the animation lines up with the voiceover. And then you're going to add your soundtrack and making sure that it doesn't drown out that voiceover or compete with that VL. And then you're going to add credits and be sure they're on screen long enough to read out loud. And then finally, you're going to render and submit your project with Media Encoder, like always. Um, ooh, that was a zoom. That was a choice. Now, it's always going to be a single MP4 with the following parameters um, for this deliverable. The video is at 10 seconds minimum without the credits, right? So, um, you know, it'll, it'll take about... 10 seconds like the monarch butterfly scene took around that time too so as long as it's like that you will be okay um a minimum of three scenes without the credits right you can't have two scenes and then a credit it won't work that way a minimum of two to three sentences of voiceover you need to have background music and the volume level isn't going to compete with the voiceover audio let me kind of zoom in a little bit further like this there we go and then you're going to credit, you're going to have credits here, and you're going to credit yourself as the animator, and then have your name, right? If the song, when you're looking for your audio, and if it says that you have to attribute the artist, then you will add the song information here, like you would put song and then the artist's name, right? Um, if it does not say that next to any of the licensing options, then you don't have to worry about it. The YouTube stuff, you're not going to have to worry about doing that here, but the other ones you might have to, it might say that you have to give credit to the artist whenever you use it for a certain project, right? So just keeping that in mind. Um, the video is going to be encoded at 1920, 1080 at 24 frames a second. And, um, you guys don't have to post on Slack, but on Discord, let me put, let me update that let me change it real quick while I'm changing that do you guys have any questions about it because this is going to be the most complex project that you guys are working on Move that back over. All right, and then here is the rubric, kind of how I'm going to grade that, right? So um, it talks about the animation of everything, the scenes, the audio, that kind of stuff. Uh, sounds good. You've got to get back to your essay that is due tonight. All right, sounds good, Mel. Thanks for sticking in um, for the beginning of the live stream, and good luck on your essay. Have fun on that. I am happy I don't have to write essays anymore. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> All right. Let me... Go back here. Do the modules. Again, when I was talking about the removing audio from your voiceover, you could do that here, right? So let's just do a little research real quick. Um about some kind of topic. I think what I'm going to do is I will do some kind of like uh, moth, I guess, or something like that, since it was kind of close to before, and since you guys won't be doing something like that. Um, or let me do... Actually, I know what I'll do. Main Coon Cat Breed. I love these cats. They're just so cute and fluffy. Not now. The main coon. Cat. Look at that beautiful face. I mean those big old kitties. They're big. Okay. So what would I do? Wikipedia is bleh. I don't think Wikipedia is a good source for facts. 
um, because anyone can put whatever they want in there. So I urge you guys to stay clear of that um, and maybe look for other types of um, of Ooh, cool. Of, of sources to find your information from. I'm not asking you to sort to source your information, but I just want you guys to, you know, use somewhere that is a reputable source. So Maine Secretary of State Cat, Maine Coon Cat. Um, I would probably put Purina Meh. Yeah, I mean, that's not bad. Pet MD. Yeah, maybe we could do that. Um, let's click on this and let's see. Facts about the Maine Coon. Uh, so, uh, great, like, uh, already with this fact, like, going through here and reading, um, the first sentence of this is, is, I can think of, like, right away for the second scene that would be similar to the map scene in, um, in the Monarch Butterfly, right, is that they originated in Maine, where they remain the official state cat, right? Like, so I could have, like, I'm already thinking, oh, great, I could have, like, an icon scene around the state of Maine. Like, so instead of the North America map, I would just maybe have a uh, Maine, the state of Maine map or something like that. Rumor has it they might be related to the feline companions of Marie Antoinette. Um, I probably wouldn't have that. Uh, adult males can weigh up to 25 pounds and they're slightly daintier female car counterparts weighing 10 to 14 pounds. That's a great, um, that is a great fact to put here because, uh, I could compare their sizes similar to the example that we had. Um, let me go back to this one second. I'm going to have to let one of these little terrorists in my room. Um, but this example here in the second scene where he compares the size of this to the buses, right? So having something comparative to the size of the main coon cat. So maybe I have the male, um, weighing up to 24 pounds, the female weighing up to 10 to 14 pounds, and maybe having like other things next to it that weigh about that size, right? So what else weighs about 25 pounds? Some dogs weigh 20, my, my puppy right now weighs about 25 pounds. Um, so you got to think that's a big cat, right? Um, uh, which 10 to 14 pounds, I feel like, I feel like that's the appropriate weight for these cats, but I've seen these cats much bigger. And in fact, I had a cat who was part Maine Coon and he was 15 pounds. So, one second, you guys. Come on. Come on, little Minerius. Get in here. Get out. In or out. Choose your game. Come on. Come on. Shut this light off. I'm going to work in on. All right, I'll leave it cracked for you. All right, so um, that would be a good fact to pick, right? So maybe I'm just going to quickly write some stuff down. And where can I write the note, right? So like um, I like to just, I'm fast at using Google Docs because Google Docs are what I'm comfortable with. So I would just create a new one and just put here, um, Maine Coon cats, um, originated in Maine. I might rewrite that to be more of something, my own words. Cat. That's the first one. Males can weigh up to 
25 pounds and females can weigh let's see what it say um 10 to 14 I'll just say up to 14 pounds and then let's find another one uh this one this isn't because the, they are very very soft and they're very sweet cats um their health issues uh interesting to know they have a shorter lifespan probably because they're large they're more prone to different diseases that could be an interesting fact but is that something i want to end my video on probably not um Oh, like this one's a really good, uh, thanks to their big lovable personalities. I'm going to copy that and paste that here and then probably rewrite that right in my own words. Um, they are the largest domestic cat breed. Let's see here. Oh, what, maybe this one, um. You know, like it's saying the health issues that they can uh, have. So maybe you just like, despite their um, cuddly and loving self, they're prone to um, several health issues. And you could like maybe visualize these. So like a heart, um, a spine, obviously like more anatomically correct to a cat, Uh kidneys hip dysplasia um gingivitis right so they're they they're pretty prone to several diseases um this is a lot of in information which is great but i'm probably going to stick to more of like the temperament thing that it says here so uh, what would i rate for this one because of the Maine Coons um what do I want to say we could say lovable let's look up a different synonym for that I like to look up synonyms I don't know if you guys do this this would probably help Mel right now in her um in her writing her essay right now but with um i just go to the thesaurus.com and i'll type in different words and that way you can find you know other things um so we're looking for more like lovable in terms of like sweet cuddly um charming is a good one so maybe because of because of the main coons charming person uh and let's say um so sweet because they kind of have a sweet temperament is what's saying there and we're looking at sweet like friendly and kind um gentle i think that's good uh, because of the Maine Coon's charming personality and gentle temperament. Comma. They have become one of the most popular house cats in the U.S. Right. Cool. So I just took this sentence and put it into my own words which um is probably something that you guys want to do another thing that i want you guys to notice is that i did not start each one of these facts with main coon like the main coon this the main coon that i did not do that i, I you know thinking of how it's going to sound when i read it out so main coon cats originated in maine and are the official state cat males can weigh up to 25 pounds and females can weigh up to 14 pounds um, maybe m making them the largest 
house cat. I might cut that part because I say house cat right here, right? So you want to think about being non-repetitive. That's the point that I was trying to make by saying, by not writing that in the beginning, main coon this, main coon that, or whatever, like giraffes this, giraffes that, right? We want to be thoughtful on how we're writing the sentences. Um, so males can weigh up to 25 pounds and females can weigh up to 14 pounds, making them the largest house cat. Because of the Maine Coon's charming personality and gentle temperament, they've become one of those popular house cats in the U.S. Um, so I think I'm going to take this part out, like I was saying, and I think that we can just go with this. Uh, in fact, I'm going to start this one with the Maine Coon cat originated in Maine and are the official state cat. Okay, perfect. So that took me all of like 10, 15 minutes to research and write. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is bring this into Adobe Audition and we're going to record it. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this. So when it comes to having your mic set up, I'm just opening Adobe Audition right now. And I'm going to set this off to the side so I can read my script while I record my VO. All right. That off here. Let me. Okay, I am going to shut my door for this. Now it's important that when you guys are going to record your voiceover that you do it in a quiet place in the house. Um, let me move this out of the way and get kind of comfortable. Um, making sure that like your air conditioner isn't running if it doesn't have to be. I know it's kind of hard right now. It's getting warmer out. This week's supposed to be all in the 90s, right? Um, but making sure that there's not like a ton of background noise in there because the more that there is, the harder it is going to be for you guys to get a clean recording of your audio. And we definitely want it to be as clean as um, possible. Let me do a couple more things. All right. So um, you're going to open Adobe Audition. And then we are going to right away go into the waveform. And when I click on the waveform, it's automatically going to want us to name the file. So I'm just going to, actually, I need this back. Type main coon. Um, VO, that's what I'll type here, and your sample rate is 48 um, hertz or 48,000 hertz if it was um, 48 khz, which is kilohertz, that's fine as well. Um, but the what it usually defaults to is just fine. Mono is great, we don't need stereo, we're not recording in stereo. It's a voiceover, so not a big deal. Um, 16 bits is perfect. It's going to work better with After Effects than 32 bits will, so keep it at the 16 bit, and we're going to hit OK. And then the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to save this file. Um, save as maincoon.wave. Yes, I'm going to pick my folder to save this in, so it's going to go to GC, this one. Um, I would have a new project here. Let me actually create that real quick. It was probably something I should have done at the beginning of class. So let me go here. Desktop right here. I'm going to copy this. Paste it. Change the name. What are we on? We're on 8. 
Ah, oh, custom. All right, custom three scene animation. I'm gonna go down to, I've created the folder, that's perfect. I'm gonna go down to this spot now, and I'm gonna get navigate to my audio file and to my VO one. I'm gonna save it there. Format, um, a WAV file is perfect. MP3 um, is a compressed audio file and it doesn't sound as good. So you guys definitely want to make sure that you're using the WAV file. By the way, Adobe Audition is in your Adobe Creative Cloud app. So if you, um, if you don't see it um, in your... If you don't see it, like if you haven't had it downloaded, just find your Creative Cloud app and download it from there. So I would just type Creative Cloud, click on this, and you will go, let me go over here. You're going to go to all apps and then go down here and find it if it's not in your repertoire of applications. So, um, first of all, I want you guys to know that, um, let's go ahead and hit record here and make sure we're getting a signal, which it does show that I am getting a signal on mine, which is perfect. I'm going to stop the recording there. I'm actually going to just delete that, um, because I don't need it. But if you are not getting a signal, right, and when you hit record, um, and record is right there, you can also hit shift and space. If you hit shift space bar, it will automatically start to record and stop recording if you need it to. So um, just keeping that in mind. But um, if you're not getting a signal, you can go to edit and down to preferences and under general preferences. Um, you can go to audio hardware and input here. You want to make sure that it is um, inputted to whatever your mic is, right? So you're just going to want to change that default input there so until you get that signal. So if you're using a headset, it would show your headset on there, so on and so forth. Um, you don't want the loudest of the waveform to be hitting the top of the graph, like right up here in your decibels, right? Um, the sweet spot to making sure your audio is at like negative 12 dB when you're looking at the audio levels bar is if your mic, um, you can turn the gain down or up to meet that spot. Um, but basically you want to be about two fists away from the microphone. So if you take your fists and you just make two fists and you put them together like this, and then you just make sure that you're about two fists lengths away from your microphone, then you should be good. If you're using the headphones, pull that mic out here and talk with it right out here, right? Um, but that's usually the sweet spot. So if I start to record and I want to see where my decibel level is hitting, it is hitting right about that negative spot. If I'm just talking, it's a little bit higher than that to negative three, but that's okay. It's still working for me. Um, when you're recording your sentences, you want to record a couple of takes, right? Um, and you want to record those takes with different inflections and different ways of saying things. Uh, maybe taking breaths in different spots. Um, but you want to make sure the biggest thing is that you're giving yourself a long enough pause in between your sentences so that um, you have the ability to kind of cut things up and move things around when you bring it into After Effects. So, um, and it, it just allows more freedom when like moving your audio around. Um, let me pull up my thing right here. I want to do, what do I want to do? This. Yeah, I want this to be here. I want this to be here. I'm moving things around so I can see stuff. And then that right there. Perfect. Okay. All right. So I've got my facts up here. I'll 
to the screen on this side. And I'm just going to hit shift record. And, oh, first of all, I want to do that here when I've got my audio, my program selected. And so um, I'm just going to stop talking for a second. And then I'm going to start to record my, my VO. The Maine Coon Cat originated in Maine and are the official state cat. The Maine Coon Cat originated in Maine and is the official state cat. The Maine Coon Cats originated in Maine and are the official state cat. Sentence two. Males can weigh up to 25 pounds and females can weigh up to 14 pounds. Males can weigh up to... Oh, it's okay. If you make a mistake like this, leave it in there. You can cut it out later. Males can weigh up to 25 pounds and females can weigh up to 14 pounds. The males can weigh up to 25 pounds and the females can weigh up to 14 pounds. Sentence three. Because of the Maine Coon's charming personality and gentle temperament, they have become one of the most popular house cats in the U.S. Because of the Maine Coon's charming personality and gentle temperament, they have become one of the most popular house cats in the U.S. Because of the Maine Coon's charming personality and gentle temperament, they have become one of the most popular house cats in the U.S. All right, I stopped that. And I'm automatically going to not need this beginning part, right? So I'm selected. If I'm so, replaying this, um, I'm just going to stop talking for a second. And then you I'm guys are hearing it right now, but I can just take my. this section. I can pause. And if I just highlight it by clicking and drag, if you click and drag, you can highlight sections, right? Um, and if I just highlight things, then I can um, delete them as needed. But I would go through this. I would likely take this and probably, um, because it's it's kind of getting up there on the decibels, so I would probably turn it down a few notches, a couple notches here. So maybe like negative, um, I don't know, let's do negative three here and see what it looks like. Um that is peaking at about negative three. Like nothing's going to go above that. I'm actually going to keep it at zero. Um, I'm going to undo that and keep it at zero so that I can, you know, update that in, in After Effects as needed. Plus, I can't actually hear it right now because there's something going on with my audio. I feel like there's always something happening with my audio, which is a pain. But um, I know that you guys could hear it when I was playing it because I could see the desktop audio on here um but um let's see let's go ahead and save this now as a file so i'm gonna go i'm gonna first of all make sure it didn't already save it let's go into the gcc folder and see in our project oh, audio VO main coon wave media player the main coon cat originated in Maine and are the official state cat the main something's coon playing cat for you guys so originated it looks in like Maine and is cool um, I'd probably export this still out file, um, export, or you can just do the save as like I did before. See, so now it's, uh, main coon VO 01. We want to select the right spot where it would go. Just because I can't hear it, that's the one I want to use. Um, because I know I'm saving it right now. Audio, VO. I'm going to save that. Perfect. 
Um, the waveform, 48 kilohertz, 16-bit, perfect. Everything's great. I'm going to save that okay. I'm going to close this out. And I am going to, um, you know, create, obviously I would want to create a new After Effects file. So I'm going to go back here. And create that new file. And this pl class is probably going to be short right now because this is what I wanted you guys to show you guys first because I want you guys to pick out your topic and I want you guys to get it approved and then Thursday we're going to go through some animation techniques, right? So, um, and then by then I'll, I'll have my audio ready. But let's set this folder up or let's set this file up anyways. So comps... Right, um, we are going to have, let me get this back in the, the keyboard, back in the spot. So the comps folder, and then I'm going to do audio. And then in that audio folder, I'm going to have two separate folders, which are going to be VO, oh, not CO, VO. And then music. All right. And then I'm going to have a normal folder named assets here. And I'm going to save this project to the appropriate one right here After Effects. Maine Coon Cat. All right, let's save that. So my file's ready. I'm going to bring my audio file in already since I already have it. Import. I'm going to navigate to where that is. Audio. VO. I'm going to do the first one. Footage is okay to import it as that because it's just audio. Let's see if I can hear it now. I don't think I'm going to be able to. The main coon cat no, originated. But at least you guys can hear stuff. That's all that I'm worried about. Okay, it might be a little loud. Sorry if it is, but cool. So um, that's kind of where I want you guys to get to for Thursday night's class. I want you guys to have your script written. I want you guys to send in the approval for the script um, to me so that I can tell you yay or nay, right? I'm not, I'm, I might tell you to rewrite a sentence or two or something, but it, it's better that I tell you now than you guys, and then you know what it is instead of having to rewrite it, recut the VO, do all this other stuff, right? Because you're going to want to go through and we're going to pick and choose be the best takes of that VO, um, once I can get my audio back and, um, put that into a thing and then in the meantime right I would probably want to because we'll say like mine has been approved right for Maine Coon um let's just type Maine Coon cat uh script here so I know what it is and um so maybe I'd want to start listing what would my assets be in this thing right so um let's put asset list let's put up here enter that down up here go back put script um turn this into the heading one I like an extra space in between here. Heading one. Perfect. And then I go down here and start writing what kind of assets I would need. So obviously um, a front view of the main coon cat. Um, I'm going to need um, map of main. 
And probably, um, maybe, possibly, slash, maybe another imagery of state cat. Like, uh, maybe, you know, like how they have, um, state cat, I don't know. Main cue here. Let's see if they have anything. No, nope, that's fine. Oh, I wish my state animal was a kitty. Anyways, <laughs> then I'm going to have to have a male Maine Coon and um, a female Maine Coon and possibly, um, let's say, two other animals slash things that are a similar size. To use a comparison, right? Maybe another, um, maybe another breed of cat, right? Um, so maybe I'm gonna put just these are notes that you guys want to start taking, right? So that you kind of know what to start doing. So maybe like another just like just standard breed of cat we can show on here, right? Um, and then because Maine Coons are charming personality and gentle temperament, they become one of the most popular house cats in the U.S. So maybe um, uh, show here, I'd want to show a room with the cat on the couch, right? Purring or something. Sleeping and being cute with toys around, something like that, right? So now that I have my asset list, I can go through and start illustrating things that I wanted that I need to make and then start setting that up inside of After Effects. Um, so that's what, you know, that's what I kind of want you guys to start at least getting your script and your topic, your topic chosen, your script written so I can get it approved by Thursday's class. And then we will go through and start um, doing some animation stuff. So, all right, you guys, um, I am going to cut class uh, an hour early right now, which is kind of soon, but we're getting towards the end of the semester, and this is more of like a choose-your-own-journey type of thing, so, um, you know, there's only so much, I have to teach you, kind of give you the tools on how to use it, and now you guys have to go off and use these tools, right, so, um, definitely do that before Thursday's class and um, g keep in mind any questions and maybe some techniques you would like to learn to animate. Um, and that way you can have a list of things for me to do or you can write in that um, topic thing like maybe I want to animate this. I need to know how. And so I can either direct you into that spot or um, show you guys how to do that on Thursday if we have time for that. But yeah. That's what we're going to be doing. Do you guys have any questions before I shut the live stream down? I'm going to assume probably not. All right, you guys, I will talk to you in class on Thursday. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the meantime through Discord or email. And I hope you guys have a good night. Have fun writing your essay, Mel. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye, guys.